Hi everyone, my name is Jesse Ryan and I'm here with uh, saxophonist John Gordon and we're here to talk about his new record. John, how are you doing? Good, Jesse. Good to see you. And so let's talk about the record. What's what's the name of the record and what's the concept? Well, the record is called Stranger Than Fiction and uh, it just felt appropriate for the times. It's actually a piece that I wrote, um, I think around 2000 and I wound up not recording it and I had that title in mind and with what we've been going through in recent years, it just really felt appropriate. Um, there's two pieces on the record that I wrote about 20 years ago. One yeah. is the tune, the title tune, Stranger Than Fiction. There's another piece called Havens. Mm -hmm. And um, Stranger Than Fiction, you know, I think it spoke to something I was going through on a personal level at the time. Okay. I was just like, I'm in something I didn't expect. Right. You know, I mean, there's certain things, well, you know, it's going to be challenging, it's going to be hard, it's going to be, I don't know what. And sometimes you're all of a sudden you're in a thing like, <laughs> okay, I really, yeah, I don't know. And, and, and this, you know, I, I'm not, you know, that, that happens to all of us, right? Yeah. Life is full of challenges and surprises that we don't yeah. fully expect or know how to handle when they, when they happen to us. But it, as one person said to me uh, that I referred to in a book I wrote as a, as a shaman or a medicine man, he said, you're not responsible for everything that happens to you in your life, but you have to be responsible towards whatever happens to you. Great, you know? great. And I, I thought that was a really great way of putting it. So sometimes it's like, I don't feel like I have some kind of mental construct or a paradigm to make sense of a given event or set of events or circumstances, but it's like, I got to try and do it, you know? And it's, and I, I think, I think that's, I think it's something that, that you know we all deal with to to uh, to some extent or another. And I think the events, you know, I mean, I knew I wanted to record those pieces, you know, in late 2019 and 2020. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a non-ed project. I don't know what I'm going to call it. I want these two older pieces to be a part of it. And a couple, there was another piece on their waking dream that I wrote in like 92. I think I've recorded in a couple of other contexts, but um, it's just sort of a thing composed vehicle for a free improvisation mm -hmm. and um i remember i had written a little uh, arrangement of a piece of quincy davis's and and uh, um and yeah i was just just writing a lot of different things for nanette and yeah. you know, i'm just trying to think of um, um you know what to put together and, and how to present it i uh, um you know that year I, I was i was thinking about these newer things along with a couple of older things and then where we got to by the spring of 2020, I was like, okay, I think Stranger Than Fiction is the title because I yep. wasn't expecting this. So. Right, right, right. That's amazing. Also, I in the early 2000s, I, I started really getting into writing for Nonet. Yeah. And I did one project uh, with Artie Shirt called Evolution that was basically a Nonet project. And we had some, some guests. We had Ruggiero Boccato on uh, depression. We had uh, the screen player Sarah Caswell. Ray Redditch and Andy Springer, and um, and we had a great vocalist, Kristen Berardi. But um, that was basically the, the gist of it was a non ed and I really loved that um, that kind of mid-sized group. I love the possibilities of it, the colors. I was very inspired by Alan Fober's non ed He had started calling me, I guess, in book six. Yeah. And I said, hey man, do you mind if I kind of like, kind of take your your template here for this group because I, I feel like I'm hearing something like this more than Big Band at this point. And he said, great. Great. Mm -hmm. He helped me with my project and and recorded on it as he did with this. And he's actually uh, the assistant producer on this. Wonderful. And he did two of the arrangements. I wrote all of the all the music and I arranged all but two of the pieces that uh, Alan arranged. Yeah, well, his writing is beautiful. He, so he also plays and produces on the record? Yeah, he's the assistant producer and he plays on the record and um, we met at the Knitting Factory in 02. Okay. And uh, he just introduced himself and, and um, I guess he'd heard me out in LA at the Jazz Bakery. I think I was playing either with T.S. Monk or, or Mike Holliver in the 90s. And um, and so uh, he said, can I call you for a gig sometime? I said, no, yeah, I'd be honored. And and he's, uh, I'm so proud of him, so happy for him and his brother, Mark. So you have 
um, Alan on trombone, and who are some of the other musicians on the project? Well, the way we did it, um, I, I wanted the project to be kind of a combination of the folks that I work with, some students, and just friends of mine that I've known for a long time. And yeah. So um, we recorded in Winnipeg at Stereo Bus Recording Paul Hughes Studio. I learned about that from playing on Will Bonas' record about a year earlier. And I realized it was an unusual situation because we had separation. Right. And I thought, well, you know, I had wanted to record in 2020 and I, you know, we, we come in with the teeth of the yeah. I thought, well, I can do it in Winnipeg with that separation. I can start with the rhythm section. So it's Will Bonas on piano, yeah. uh, Jocelyn Gould on guitar, uh, Julian Bradford on the bass, and Fabio Ragnelli on drums. And, uh, and it was just enough rooms for all of us to be in separate rooms. And it, you know, it worked that way very well for Will Bonas' project. And I thought, let's start with that. Right. And then I'll have uh, our, our trumpet prof, Derek Gardner, play his part remotely. Because he told me, I'm already recording remote, remotely at my home on some right. platform. So I'm, ready, I'm set up for that. I knew John Ellis was. He's an old friend and one of my favorite saxophone players. Yeah. He plays bass clarinet on part of the project. He has a solo. I said, man, what do you want to play on tenor? or bass clarinet, hear the changes, and he actually chose to play his solo on bass clarinet. Nice. Derek Gardner plays a killer solo on this one too, and I, well, I was so happy. I was like, I know what Derek's going to do on this. <laughs> he's such a great blues player. And I was yeah. like, I know he's going to, and and, that, and I called him up. I said, I, he said, oh yeah, you know, you know. <laughs> so it was great. And everybody played great. And then we had uh, three former students. Uh, well, actually, uh, Jocelyn is a former student. Right. And now she's running the, the guitar, uh, uh, the whole guitar thing at Humber College. At Humber, yeah. Uh, and uh, Julian Bradford is a former student. Amazing. And uh, having a great career. So in addition to the folks I mentioned, we had recent former students, Anna Blackmore, that played as a bass clarinet. Okay. Reginald Lewis, uh, mm -hmm. who's doing a doctoral degree now at University of Illinois. He played some tenor. Mm -hmm. And Kristen Martins played some tenor. Wow. And they all graduated the past couple of years. Yeah. Uh, and then one other guest that we had on the record uh, was Oren Evans, who's one of my favorite pianists in uh, Philly. How we did it, I've never done a project like <laughs> this where you, know, where you put it together, but yeah. my hope was that because we started it in that organic way with the five of us, right, and right, we right. know Derek real well, so adding Derek was real easy. And then I've, I've been knowing Alan Ferber and John Ellis for so long. And Oren, I hadn't played with that much. I had just played with him some in, the, in his big band uh, okay. when he played Smoke. Yeah, I've heard a little bit of the record so far, and I'm excited to hear the record. When can people expect to, to hear the record? Um, the record is scheduled to be out in September, so I don't know. We don't know what the world's going to look like the latter part of this year, but I'm hoping that we'll be back to something resembling yeah. closer to normal, and then maybe be able to tour a little bit with the project yeah. at the end of this year. So pretty much, stay tuned. It's going to be out in September, and you want to try to bring it to audiences as much as you can in, in, in the ways possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. And, and I think for me, certainly this year has been a learning experience. So yeah, I would say the, the project will be out in September. Hopefully we'll be in, uh, have some ability to be playing in public soon after that. Well, I have I have no doubt that um, the album is going to be well received. You've had a, a long, amazing career as a, as a leader, as a sideman. And I'm really looking forward to hearing the entire album. Um, where can people um, get connected with you? What's your website? You know, what's your social media socials? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm mm -hmm. on YouTube. Um, JohnGordonMusic.com. Okay. Uh, J-O-N-G-O-R-P-O-N. Okay. Uh, is, is my artist show site. And the, the CD is my, I think this is my fifth CD over the last 15 years with artist share. And I've had a couple of other uh, live concert download movies with them over the years as well. Yep. The, uh, the CD is available, certainly is available through Artist Share. And okay. you can go on and you can pre buy the CD now. The other okay. Thing is if anyone is interested and they want to support the music, because what Artist Share basically is about is to bring people into the process. What was the writing of this like? Let me see what the music looks like for this. What's the, what's the arrangement look like for that? Um, can I ask you some questions? You know, and so Artist Share is designed to bring fans into the creation process right. where they actually co-produce. And so there's still, over the next few months, there's still plenty of time if you want to re buy the CD or be a part of the production, the actual production of the CD and support the, the actual uh, creation of the project, you can do that through my Artist Share. 
Amazing. So it's available now for, for pre-order on Artist Share and and fans could could interact and reach out to you throughout this entire process. So look out for Stranger Than Fiction from John uh, John Gordon coming out in September. Thanks, Jason.